Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video, and the king is back. That's right, today guys, we've got episode number one of FM19 Beta, my West Ham series. Oh my gosh, I've been looking forward to this so, so much. The beta finally dropped last Thursday afternoon. Perfect timing for me, would you believe? Because as you may have noticed, no content over the channel over the weekend. Because I have been in London town seeing the family. But I have been playing the FM19 beta. I am 9, 10 games into the season. Today you're getting my 10th league game of the season. I'm going to take you through everything that's been going on so far. All the transfers, all the games, the new tactic system, the new training system, all the new bits that I've found so far. I'm so looking forward to this video. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting all weekend to get back from London to do this very video. I'm so looking forward to this. Let's get cracking with the king of football games. Here it is guys, FM19, my manager profile screen. I've started you on here because like I say, I'm a few games into the season now. It's the 4th of November and I am going to take you through all the results we've had so far. I'm going to go through the transfers first, then I'm going to go through the squad, the, the tactics, the training. I'm going to go through everything and then we are going to have our first game of the series away against Crystal Palace in the league. A London derby should be a very good game. So let's go and crack on and get started with this. So first things first is the transfers. And we've only made three deals because we only started with a budget of around 20 million quid. Something like that. And in football these days, that's a pittance. So the first guy we did bring in was that man Zadas. Every streamer and his dog had him last year. And I didn't get to use him because I didn't hear about him until towards the end of the management FM18 cycle. So yeah, so I brought him in for 300,000. And he's, look, he's looking decent so far. He's looking okay. He's only played two games for us, or started two games. Both of them in the Carabao Cup. And he's made three substitute appearances in the league. So he's someone who I'm going to look to try and develop. Hopefully he can improve over the next few years. And I can get him to be as good as some of the other streamers did on last year's game. And then following him is Victor Moses, a right back on loan from Chelsea. We had him on loan a couple of years ago. And he did quite well for us, I thought. I quite liked him. And so I brought him back £700,000 a month. Little bit steep, little bit more than I would have liked. But, yeah, but you've got to do what you've got to do. He's going to be a bit of cover for Zabaleta. And he's going to be someone to maybe try and bring Fredericks through. That's what I'm thinking. So, yep, he's joined the club on the same day as Zadas. And then the big, big signing is Kasper Dolberg. 13 and a half million quid. He's come in. He was injured for two months when we got him. But I wanted to get him in because I've heard a lot about him. I've heard he is very, very good. And so he's come in. He's only played a couple of games for us. Yeah, he's played two games, but he has scored one goal in the league and one in the cup. So, yeah, three games he's played, two in the league, one in the cup, two goals. So he's doing quite well. Like I said, he had that two-month injury, and then he came in and he got another injury soon after his uh, initial injury. So... So he's only been able to play a few games. But now he is in the team. He is looking very good. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far from him. So hopefully that 13.5 million could prove to be a little bit of a bargain. And as for outgoings, only a couple of youngsters gone out. Grady Jingana and Josh Pask have both gone out on loan. Not really too much to talk about there. And so before we go on to the squad, let's have a look how we have been getting on in the league and in the fixtures. So we started off the season with a very boring, very average nil-nil draw against Watford. I didn't really have my tactics or my first 11 really decided too much at that point. And it was just a bit of a nothing game. 
so we'll just move on quickly. Following on from that, we had a 2-1 loss against Arsenal. We did take the lead, as you can see, very early in the second half. And I thought we was going to hold on. But then Lacazette got an equaliser. And Fabian Balbuena scored an own goal off a corner. And so that was very disappointing to give away the three points there. But then following on from that, we did go on a very decent four-game run without losing. First up was Liverpool. Marko Arnautovic scored early doors against Liverpool to give us a win. We had to hold on for most of the game though, because if you look at the stats, we had 17 shots to their 22, 8 on target to their 9, and we bossed the possession, but it really did seem like Liverpool were bossing the game, and we was quite lucky to get out of there with a point, with a win even, so I was very happy with that. And then we went and beat Bristol Rovers on penalties with a second string team. Very happy with that. And then Bournemouth, possibly our best performance up to that point, I would say, up until the last game, which you can see the score below. I'll go through that in a minute. But we beat Bournemouth 4-1. It was 1-1 at half time. And then we had a 12-minute spell in the second half where we scored three goals, completely took the game away from them. So that was a very, very nice performance. Very good result. I was very happy with that. And then again, another good one at home against Wolves. 3-0 win. Ogbonna, Chicharito, Noble with the goals. We was playing very, very well at this point. But then Brighton came. And I'll show you the stats for this one. We was away against a recently promoted team. And they had 16 shots to our 7, 6 on target to our 3, and bossed a possession. And this was just a game where we were very, very poor. Then after that, we did play Liverpool. And we beat them again. And as you can see, a little bit of a coincidence. In the first game against Liverpool, Marko Arnautovic scoring in the 7th minute. In the, in the cup game against Liverpool, Arnautovic scoring in the 7th minute. So that might be something to keep an eye out for later on in the series uh, when we play Liverpool again. See if he scores in his seventh minute again. That would be that would be quite hilarious, I think. But yeah, another good result. In both the games against Liverpool, I set up with a very deep defensive line. I think that's how you've got to just play against them. You've got to set yourself up very deep and then just hit them on the counter. And that's what we did. And we've come away with two very good results against them. And speaking of good results, I really thought we was going to get the win here against Manchester City. I was on the train back from London when I played this game. And when Diop scored his goal, I was so tempted to just scream the whole train down. Just because I thought we was going to get a win against the best team in the country. Possibly one of the best teams in the world. I really thought we was going to get it. But then, Felipe Anderson played a beautiful through ball. But... It was to Sergio Aguero. And as you can see, Aguero put the ball away. And that was, that was the start of a little bit of a decline for Anderson, who has started quite well for us because he gave away the pass for that goal. And then against Southampton, he got himself sent off. And we almost got a point, but we tried pushing too much for the win with 10 men. And they made us pay in the 86th minute. Mohamed Elanousi picking up the winner for them. And then following on from that, our worst performance of the year so far. We was away to United and we lost 3-1. We never really looked to be in it. Noble's goal was our only decent shot on target for the whole game. So I was very disappointed with that. And then we went and played against Tottenham at home. And what a game this was. Oh my days. Declan Rice scored the first goal and gave us the lead against Tottenham. Declan Rice would have absolutely loved that, sorely. And so then, our Marko Arnautovic made it 2-0 with less than 10 minutes gone. And I really thought we was going to go and get a win against our big rivals. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Because following on from that... Deli Ali scored in the 25th minute to make it 2-1. And then in the 80th minute, Sung Hyung Min equalised after I had gone a bit more defensive, tried to tighten up, tried to see the game out. 
and then Sean, like I say, they equalised. But then in the 83rd minute, Kasper Dolberg got his first goal for the club to make it 3-2. And I thought that that was going to be us winning the game. But then in the 91st minute, we had six minutes of added on time. But in the 91st minute, Harry Kane nicked an equaliser to break our hearts. But 3-3 against a good Tottenham team? I'll take that. That was a very, very good game. But then our best performance of the season so far. We absolutely thrashed Crystal Palace 5-1 in the League Cup. And they are the team who we are playing against today. And as you can see, Zadas scored his first goal for the club. Was that his first goal? I swear he scored somewhere else. Has he? I don't know. Let's have a look. Zadas, how many goals has he scored? Just that one. Okay, I must have been imagining it. Maybe I'm foreshadowing him scoring today. So Zadas got his first goal for the club to make it 1-0. Dolberg made it 2-0. Rice, with his second in two games, made it 3-0. And then they got it back to 3-1. But then Slap scored an own goal to give us a 4-1 lead. And then Chicharito, who had come on to give Dolberg a bit of a rest, he came on and he finished it and made it 5-1. And if we have a look at the stats, ooh, they're actually surprising. The game did not play out like that. We had 19 shots to their 20, 8 on target to their 7, and then 44% of the ball to their 56. It really did, watching it, seem like we dominated the game. But you wouldn't say so from those stats. But that all leads us to where we are today. We are in the league against Crystal Palace away. And as things stand, we are currently 12th in the table behind Cardiff. And Cardiff so far this season have been a bit of a surprising force. With about five, six games gone, they was third in the table. They had a brilliant start to the year. But they're falling down a little bit now. And hopefully we can get, we can get past them with a win today. That would be very, very nice. And so we're 12th. We've played 10 games, won three, drawn four, lost three. So very average, but hopefully we can start kicking on today. And we have got a goal difference of plus three, which is very, very nice to see because us West Ham fans are not used to that particular stat. And so now having a look at the average ratings of the squad, I'm going to take you through the top four or five. Marky Noble has got an average rating of 7.27, which is very, very good. I'm very happy with that. And the new training ratings, which have come into the game this year, as for us, Mark Noble tops them every single week. I'm telling you, the man is a machine. He's constantly getting at least a 9.5 on the training ratings, so I'm very happy with that. And it's definitely transferring over to the pitch. And then next up, having only played three games, but he scored twice, is Kasper Dolberg with a 7.17. Definitely proving so far that that 13 million could have been a bargain. And next up is Felipe Anderson, as despite being sent off and despite giving away that own goal, he's still on a 7.09. It's a Diops on a 7.08. Same as Zabaleta. And Rice and Ogbonna are up there as well. So we have got some very, very good performing players. And now let's go and have a look at the tactics. And so this is what I've been going with for most of the season so far. It's a 4-5-1. It's all custom. And I want to point out it's custom because I've been hearing off a lot of people that some of the presets make the game a little bit too easy. Especially the Gigan Press style. So I've heard that and I wanted to make my own tactic anyway. So that's just an extra reason for me to want to make it all custom, make it all myself. And so that's what I've done. I've got Fabianski in goal as a sweeper keeper. I've got Diop, Ogbonna and Rice in the middle of the defence. As I'm just going to change Yarmolenko for the Palace game to Antonio if he is fit. And is he? Yes, he is. And so, yep, that's the only change I'm making. And so then we've got Masuaku on the left, Sabaleta on the right, Noble and Obiang. Actually, Obiang can get changed as well. I was just going to leave this same as what we just had for the cup game, 
but it's back in the league, so I want to try and go back to full strength. Yeah, so Noble and Wilshere in the middle. And then I'm going to leave Zadas on. He played well in the other game against Palace, so he's going to get to start. Arnautovic is going to get a little bit of a rest, but I am going to put him on the bench. Where is he? Arnautovic, uh, instead, of, instead of Yarmolenko? Yeah. Instead of Yarmolenko, he can come on. Come on to the bench. So we've got Zadash on the left, Antonio on the right, Dolberg up top. He's looking very good since he's come into the team. And so this new tactic system, I am loving the whole in possession, in transition, out of possession thing. I'm really, really loving it. So, yeah, if you're lucky, you can set your attacking width, your approach play, your final third. And so I'm going very wide, much higher tempo. And I'm going run at defence, be more expressive. If you want to see this more in depth, I'm just going to let you pause it or whatever. Just want to try and get on to the game. And so you can see we've got counter press, we've got counter. And out of possession, we've got a standard defensive line with a higher line of engagement. And so let's just have a quick look at training. I've not been using this screen too much, if I'm going to be quite honest. The one I have been using is the calendar screen and I've not been doing all the schedules and all the practices or whatever but I have just been dipping in here and there and just adding in little bits as I see appropriate for the upcoming game so that's what I've been doing what have you guys been doing let me know down below how you've been doing with tactics how you've been doing with training let me all know down below I want to get some comments on this video that would be very awesome and so that's the tactics and the training looked at very, very quickly. I'm sure you've seen other guys have more of an in-depth look at it. But I just want to get into the game. And so let's go get into this against Crystal Palace. And so this is going to be the team. I've already gone through it with you guys. So let's go proceed to the game and let's go and win this. So Crystal Palace going with a 4-2-3-1. Our old player, Krit Cheku Kiati. In the midfield for them, Wilfred Jahar, their star man, on the left-hand side. But hopefully, we can have a similar result as what we had in the Cup. And get another win to hopefully push us up the league a little bit. And as for the team talk, I'm going to go assertive. Going to go pick up where you left off last time. And seems most of them seem motivated. Going to go, I have faith. And this is something I very much like. This new line here. I'm pretty sure this wasn't in the old game. Zabaleta, team leader, looked happy. And because he looked happy, Wilshere was inspired by Zabaleta's reaction. That's a very, very nice new touch. As again, I'm going to go, I have faith. And once again, you've got to have faith for faith for faith. And now that's, let's going to end the team talk. And let's go to the tunnel. Uh, you've left Reed out. Is that due to his recent injury problems? Well, yeah, he's been out for eight months. He's not nowhere near fit yet. So I'm going to go I'd rather talk about the 11 players who are going to be starting. And Yarmolenko did look sharp in training. He has been training awfully so far this season. So he's not been getting that many game, that many game time. That much game time. That's the word I'm going for. As now the game finally getting started. Koyati plays it out wide. And that's the end of that starting highlight. And now Fabianski to Diop. To Ogbonna. Plays it long, but Townsend intercepts it. That was a poor pass there from Ogbonna. Townsend with a long shot, and that goes wide. So we survived that early attack. And now Zabaleta with a throw in to Wilshire. Back to Zabaleta. And Zabaleta plays it all the way back to Masuaku, who's in the middle of the pitch, and gives it away to Townsend. Koyati kicks it long, goes to Jordan Ayu. And Ayu running at us. Oh, he's past one, he's past two. Oh, oh I thought he was going to put that in the back of the net. What a goal that would have been. Palace already are looking better than what they did in the week. Just about half an hour gone and Wilfred Jahar's injured, which is a little bit of a bonus for us. And now we're coming forward with the ball. Will's here with it. Can he find a teammate? He goes wide to Masuaku. And Masuaku into the middle of the box. And Dolberg hits the post. And it's come out. Ah, oh, I thought that was going to be the one. 
And now, just before half time, Palace are coming forward. And Ogbonna is. Ogbonna's tackled one of the Palace players there. And what's the reaction going to be? He's off! Oh. Oh, my days. Okay. Well, easy enough fix. Zabaleta and Masuaku drop back down. And I think leave it at that. But put put them on fullback on support. And Masuaku as well on the same. And maybe put Wilson. Maybe put him back down to support. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that for the time being. And so let's go confirm the changes. And I'm going to have to have a word with the lads at half time in a second. Okay, guys, that is half time. Nil nil. Zaha's gone off injured. Ogbonna's been sent off. We've had six shots to their five, two on target to their one. So it's not been the best game of football ever. Might get a bit more exciting now that we are down to 10 men. I'm just going to have a team talk with the lads. I'm going to go. Gonna go and save. I'm far from please, cause, uh, yeah, I'm far from please. See if that fires them up. Uh, Masuaku there is looking quite knackered, so I'm gonna take him off for Aaron Cresswell, cause if he's gonna have to be doing the work of an extra man, don't want anyone who's too shattered on the pits. And so, I'm gonna leave it as is, or do I go for a bit more direct passing? Yeah. Now we're down a man. We're going to go for more direct passing and just see if we can get anything out of this game. And so let's go crack on with the second half. Can our 10 men nick a win? Now Wills here, back to Rice. Dolberg heads it wide to Antonio. Antonio inside to Noble. And he plays it out to MacArthur. And now Sissoko. With the ball coming forward on the right-hand side. Can we win it back? Yes, we can. Well done. And that's the end of that particular highlight. Now an hour gone. Palace with a free kick just outside our box. But it curls just outside our goal. So we are still at nil-nil. And it's time to bring Arnautovic on, I think. For Zadas. And leave it at that for the time being. Why did that sub not go through? Okay. So now Cresswell's coming on for Masuaku. That should have gone through at half time. Not quite sure why it didn't. And now, oh, Palace got a penalty. Okay. Didn't see why that was. But now it's Ayu with it. And Fabianski saves. Get in, Super Pole. Oh, thank God for that. And now the ball is, is not going to go out just yet. It's Kriati to MacArthur to Mayer. Mayo through, and we get, get, get it away. Goes to Dolberg. Dolberg out wide. Come on. And he plays it to Antonio. Is Antonio going to get to it? No, he's not. Oh. So, we've had a man sent off and given away a penalty. But it's still nil-nil. Can we please get a win? And now, Zabaleta heads it away. Goes to Antonio. And Dolberg, he's all alone on his own up there. I'm going to go a little bit higher, I think. And can I not change anything yet? Okay, and apparently not. So let's just go back to the pitch. And now, oh, oh, I'm missing everything here. I'm so sorry, guys. Goal line technology, they're never, ever a goal that, unfortunately. And now can I make some changes? Yes, I can. Thank you very much, game. So now, yep, yeah, we've already got more direct passing in transition. Here we go. Much higher line of engagement. We're going to go for a higher defensive line because I do think we can still win this. And now go confirm changes. 20 minutes left to go. Can we nick a winner? As now Rafa has a corner, goes into the box, but Wilson heads it away, but only if I was... No idea how to pronounce that name. Rafa with the ball. And cuts inside, goes to Ayu, and we've cleared it away. I thought for a second that was going to be another penalty. Dolbe keeps the ball in very nicely there. Goes to Wilshere. And can Wilshere find Arnie? Oh, he's gone past one man. Goes to Arnie. Arnie shoots in just wide. Ah. 
And now, like, last five minutes, just going to bring Chicharito on for Dolberg, who's got a bit of a knock. And then to see if he can make any sort of difference in the last five minutes. And now Rafa with it to Milosevic. And that goes wide. And now three minutes left of injury time. Diop with a long kick there. And Chicharito's on to this. Chicharito's in the box. Chicharito shoots and hit the post. Oh. I thought we had nicked a winner there. And then we've got another attack. Noble with the corner. Kriati heads it away. And is this going to be Palace coming at us? Uh, that's a very poor pass there. But it finds its way to Rafa. And oh. Antonio's in. Antonio's in here. Antonio shoots and it's save again. Chicharito. Yes. 92nd minute. Chicharito wins it for us. I've no idea how that ball ended up getting back to Antonio. Rafa kicked it, hit one of his teammates and went to Antonio. He's saved by Guita. Antonio played it back to Chich and 1-0. Oh, we have escaped with the three points here. You've got to think. Rafa with the free kick. Oh, almost made me eat my words out. But we've got a free kick. And come on, referee. He has blown his whistle. That is the end of the game. Oh, some late, late drama there. But we've won the game. Probably didn't deserve to. We did have more shots and more on target, but less possession. I don't know, maybe a draw might have been a fairer result, but I'm going to take it. I'm not going to complain. That is a 1-0 win. We have survived. That is now two wins in, in all, all competitions on the bounce. And now just going to have a look, see where that leaves us in the league table. And that is where I am going to leave it. So where does that leave us? That leaves us up in seventh. Very happy with that. And so, guys, hope you've enjoyed that video. Wasn't the most exciting of games, but there will be more exciting ones. And subscribe if you did enjoy that, please, for FM19 beta content with this West Ham series. And when the main game comes out, I'm going to be doing a Met Police FC series once the lower league databases are all out for that. I'm also doing Pro Evo 2019, a West Ham Master League series and a Barcelona Classic League series. And I'm doing a WWE 2K19 My Career Mode series. So subscribe for all that good stuff. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up down below. In And give us a thumbs up if you're excited for the return of FM19. And yeah, follow me on Twitter at Bad Jokes Gaming. And just one thing left to say... I am Bad Jokes Gaming, I am out.